Your Excellency is very distinguished, ladies and gentlemen. Talking to us on natural gas, Nigeria's um, next big steps, please let's welcome Dr. Wisdom Patrick Enning. Dr. Enning? Come on, please welcome Dr. Enning, ladies and gentlemen. Warm good morning, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I am most grateful to God and to the organizing committees of this summit for providing this great opportunity for me to share an exploratory research titled Natural Gas, Nigeria's Next Big Thing. This topic is apt and resonates harmoniously with the strategic objectives of the Nigerian Petroleum Policy which seeks to leverage on gas to move away from oil as a source of the nation's income, major income. Let me start by saying that Nigeria is a country of gas with some quantities of oil. This assertion stems boldly from the fact that till date, most of the gas produced in Nigeria are associated and derived whilst in the conscious pursuit of oil exploration and production, nonetheless, the volumes are highly competitive. Nigeria today remains one of the biggest regional and global oil and gas producing nation with about 37,000 million barrels of proven crude and about 200.4 TCF of gas. It also prides itself as the largest producer of low sulfur of the of low sulfur crude, the largest producer of low sulfur sweet crude in OPEC, and 52% of the um, total proven reserve in Nigeria is associated, meaning that it's is derived during the uh, production of oil. Nigeria is the fourth largest LNG exporter in the world, and Trend 7 would add, would, would increase that capacity to about 30 metric tons, making it the third largest exporter. If we take a look at the Nigerian natural gas pathway, we will find that part of it is still being fled, and although this trend is decreasing gradually uh, over time, and there's an increased domestic consumption and exportation, well, the, the fact remains that there's still some form of flaring in some significant quantities. So the pertinent question then is, why do we flare in the first instance? Some of the reasons are lack of the infrastructure for some of the gas to be harnessed, um, uh, a limited number of, of reservoirs that are suitable for gas injection, the expensive nature of developing and installing the gas gathering network, a limited regional and international market, and the difficult terrain that you need to gather the gas. Thank you. So, between 2001 to 2016, there was a 91.13 increase in the production of, of, of gas as a result of you know, the oil production activities we've been doing. But at the same time, because of the conscious effort uh, we talked about a, a little bit uh, previously, there has been a 38.06% decrease in the amount of gas fled. Notwithstanding these efforts, the Nigeria still, a lot more needs to be done because Nigeria still in 2017 was rated in, within the top seven gas flaring nations 
with about 178 flare sites. Some of the side effects of gas flaring include environmental pollution with noise, acidic rain, and global warming. One of such effects is the rusted roof, which is something we all, we all can relate to. It is estimated that gas flaring costs the Nigerian economy 2.5 billion dollars yearly, and in the next 10 years, we could lose as much as 9 trillion naira if flaring continues at the current pace. So therefore, the opportunity cost in front of us is to choose between continuing to flare or 2.5 giga, gigawatts of power supply, 35,000 uh, primary healthcare centers and 10,000 kilometers of paved road networks. The increased advocation for clean exploitation of fossil energy in Nigeria is equal to the Nigerian membership, some of the uh, memberships that we have and the commitments and quota we have given to also minimize our carbon footprint and, and uh, advocate for, um, uh, advocate for uh, energy use in a way that is really sensible and in a way that is sustainable. Some of those are the Nigerian membership of Global Gas Flare Reduction Partnership, the World Bank's Zero Routine Flurry Initiative, uh, targeted by 2030 and was signed in 2016. The Federal Executive Council approval of our Nigerian Gas Flare Commercialization Program and our, signatory, our being a signatory to the, firm, the, nation, the United Nations Framework Agreement for Climate Change to Reduce Greenhouse Emissions. This advocation, this, um, however, this advocation is not entirely new. From the onset of our petroleum industry, there has been always the conscious effort to advocate responsible exploitation of fossil energy. For example, in 1969, the petroleum drilling and production regulations provided the regulations for protecting sacred lands water, and the environment. In 1979, the Associated Gas Reinjection Act compelled every oil and gas company to submit pro uh, their programs and detailed plans for gas reinjection, and also regulated their gas flaring activities. In 1992, the Environmental Impact Assessment set forth principles, methods, and um, procedures to enable environmental impact assessment and uh, on certain public and private projects. More recently, the flare gas regulations of 2008 introduced the polluters pay principle, similar to the carbon tax, imposed significant obligations with regards to reporting gas flaring activities, mandates uh, government access to the flat sites free of charge and without royalties and impose significant penalties for breach of these regulations. The Nigerian Gas Flare Commercialization Program, recently commissioned in 2016, provides a, commer a commercial framework within which within which Technically and uh, commercially viable gas utilization projects can be developed by third party investors. The way it works is the government takes gas at a flat site free of charge without paying royalties, and that's leveraging on the um, 2018 flare gas regulations. 
bids this gas out to third parties in a series of auctions, taking into consideration the flow price at zero point five dollars, two five dollars per standard cubic feet of gas, and then the third parties can then propose their projects and are selected on the basis of technical, financial qualifications, soundness of project proposals, and several other criteria. Now, what is in it for the investor? Apart from the profit margins, is the flexibility that this program offers. The flexibility that the program offers. For example, they have the liberty to bid for any of the flare sites, the gas price to offer, taking into consideration the floor price, the end gas market, as well as the technology to be used. And I, when I read of this um, initially, I was really, really excited because I felt this was a very win-win uh, proposal. And, and in fact, what I felt was this introduced a commercial framework for which we can incentivize gas investments. So the objectives, the objective of the um, Nigerian Gas Commercialization Program includes the benefits that it offers to the community. It's a market-driven solution, and in fact, it is actually the biggest of its kind in the world. It offers uh, some good protection for the uh, producers, as well as improve the economy and a bankable solution for investors and lenders. And most of all, it's targeted at reducing um, routine flaring starting from the end of 2020. So, with an estimated investment of three billion in the program, we are then looking at an estimated annual revenue of one billion. And there are other effects, for example, 300,000 potential jobs could be created. And this is done all with the host community at heart. Who gets products at concessional prices? The procurement of goods and services are going to mostly be from the host community. And of course, setup of infrastructure for host community development. After harnessing gas, After harnessing gas, the next question then is, how do you transport the gas to the market? And at the top right, there are, um, you know, some of op the options, are, some of the options are given. And although there's more than two criteria that will apply to the final decision, but this just gives a holistic view of some of the main criteria that are typically applied. For example, if you have um, a huge volume of gas for a relatively small distance to the market, then of course, the most viable thing would then be the pipeline. If you have, on the other hand, a huge volume, and you then have a distance to market that is quite far, then LNG potentially becomes the solution. The CNG comes in as a quasi-economical solution when the distance is relatively short. And if we, the technology for the pipelines are quite obvious. So if we're looking, for example, at the LNG and the CNG, um, you know, in details, then we can see that the CNG offers a much cheaper solution, but doesn't really apply depending on the distance that you're going. But in terms of the cost splits, most of the cost for the LNG comes from the liquefaction, which takes about 50%, and on the CNG, as much as 89% comes from uh, the shipping. So the question is, besides on-site gas utilization and flaring, where does the Nigerian gas go? Well, there are two main value chains for it the domestic consumption, and the gas exportation. On the gas exportation front, 
there has been an increase in the export profile of our LNG over time, and the Nigerian customer base as well for LNG has been increasing. And whilst I'm not focused on, on the absoluteness of these numbers, it shows a trend which is still valid till date. And that is, if you look at the um, far uh, left corner, you would see that for each successive year, there is an increase in the profile of customer base and the regions that our LNG um, products have been supplied to. If we are going to reach gas in remote deep water assets, then of course we need to be thinking FLNG, floating LNG. The um, displayed picture indicates that Nigeria has the possibility of operating FLNG, and this really means that we can harness some of our deep water assets which have much of gas in them. Uh, getting this technology on board would mean that there will be no need for pipelines, there will be no need for compression units, there will be no need for jetty constructions, there will be no need for onshore LNG processing plants. The facility can also be decommissioned and redeployed elsewhere relatively easily, and smaller and more remote fields can be accessed. The demand for LNG would only look to increase in the long term, and this is because just of as has been discussed in the previous sessions, with the uh, rising penetration of uh, renewable energy, we still need LNG as a flexible power generation uh, you know, option to balance electricity grid in most economies. The use of LNG too in the industrial transportation sectors will still push up this demand particularly in Asia, where environmental concerns are on the rise. Achieving sustainable growth in LNG necessitates several conscious steps from the government and the industry to achieve cost competitiveness through reducing LNG costs through the supply chain, increasing local gas production, ensuring security of supply through expanding the pipeline and, st and storage infrastructure, having more flexible LNG contracting, developing uh, new ac access enabling technologies, and sustainability mainly through development of low carbon technologies for gas. So the whole drive is about having a responsible uh, value chain for the LNG. The power sector remains the leading consumer of natural gas with about 60% consumption rates. However, the variance between the available plant capacity of 7,141 megawatts as of 2015, for example, and the operational capacity of 3,879 megawatts indicates inherent market frictions urgently requiring government attention. So some of the key challenges facing the power sectors include gas availability, and as we grow as a nation, the, gas, the demand for energy is increasing, then of course the uh, supply has to match the demand. Then the other issue is being able to deliver the gas, having uh, adequate transportation and processing infrastructure and then, last of all, the commercial issue, which has been extensively discussed in other sessions regarding regulated gas pricing, uh, secure, securing payments, and then having an enforceable GSPS. Right. Okay. So, when considering gas monetization, a number of critical factors come to play. And the chart at the top right indicates a correlation of these factors, um, just using two factors, uh, two of them, which is gas quantity and the wellhead price. However, there are much more than that. 
Okay. So, if you had a relatively cheap supply of gas in low quantities, then of course you might want to consider something like a fertilizer. But if you then have uh, something, the uh, gas that you're getting from an offshore facility, there is uh, all the expense of transportation has been put into place, and that has influenced on the upwards direction the price of the gas. And you have them in good quantities, then of course LNG becomes a more profitable option. There are some other options, and with the quantity of gas required for them, depending on what your monetization interest would be. Um, but the other criteria to consider is the size of and quality of the gas resource, um, because of course, what you can do with rich gas may not be what you can do with lean gas, and of course, the NGLs that come with that. The location of the resource relative to the market that you're going to, the competitiveness of the end products, how bankable is the product that you're going into. We you know, had a panel we were discussing about here about uh, what uh, the uh, challenges the power sector is facing. So of course, you want to choose your market very carefully. The requirement for strategic partners uh, or agreements from foreign governments uh, where applicable, project financing, uh, environmental approval, technology availability and reliability, logistics of project construction. And this is by no means an exhaustive list. In summary, the competitiveness of gas technologies varies widely depending upon the specific uh, project and the regional market. Various monetization options are technically feasible, but not all are commercially viable or practical long-term solutions. So the question is, what are the investment opportunities in Nigeria at the moment? As published by the Ministry for State and Petroleum Resources, there are over 50 billion worth of investment opportunities within the Nigerian um, petroleum sector. Particularly, 14 to 17 billion of this investment is targeted at the gas subsector. Within this portfolio, we do have projects including the Nigerian gas flare commercialization, which I talked earlier about, the gas revolution industrial park, and the gas to power, um, gas to power fertilizer and petrochemicals. So the question then is why at all would you invest in, a, in Nigeria? The first I would say is um, the government's resolve to address the, de uh, the gas uh, delivery concerns because, of course, that is a concern. It, it is a friction that we're experiencing in the industry, but of course there is an ever-growing and strong resolve to, this an ever-growing strong resolve to address that. With over five active, uh, actively progressed pipeline construction projects, with at least three of them in the completion stages, this indicates that the resolve of the Nigerian government to address this concern is even stronger. The recently signed FID for the AKK pipeline, which is a part of the Trans-Nigerian gas pipeline that would take gas from the south-south to the north and even beyond, further affirms the government's resolve and commitment. Nigeria is among the, top, the nations with the top tier and most attractive gas physical terms, according to Rogers Consulting, an independent management firm. And what they did, they ranked our PSC gas physicals in the same bucket as some of the most prolific oil and gas producing nations in the world, like the US and Canada. Uh, some of the main fiscal incentives include the tax rates are at a tax rate under the PPT at 30 percent, the capital allowance rate at 20 percent per annum in the first four years, investment tax credit at 50 percent, and royalty at 7 percent onshore and 5 percent offshore. In addition to the main fiscal incentive, there are some project specific 
fiscal incentives which exist depending on the project you're going to. The LNG projects has its own, the gas explo uh, exploitation projects upstream has its own, and the gas exploitation projects downstream has its own. That being said, it is important to state that good physicals are not just about government take, and this alone could not attract the much needed investment in the country's gas sector, specifically as regards to gas to power where the general consensus indicates limited investment potentials. More, gas, more, more market and policy reforms are required to promote bankable investment opportunities for investors. Fitch Solutions. In 2019, rated the Nigerian upstream market as the second in sub-Saharan sub African region and 11th globally, and this happens to be a drop from the first position that we had in 2018. They cite that the Nigerian Petroleum Industry Bill holds the potential to unlock a new wave of investments. In fiscal solutions rating, we rank number, number one in the in the downstream sector, and this is much owing much to our increased potentials due to the Nigerian domestic si uh, market size and the potential for growth, driven mainly by the country's um, growing population and energy demand forecast, as well as the access to the crude feeds. The newly signed FID for the Trans 7 and the AKK pipeline further indicates. Um, investor confidence in Nigerian gas sector, and which holds a lot of potential. My last slide. Where I start. Okay. As our nation's consumption and gas, uh, as our national consumption and exportation of natural gas continues to grow, the imperative then remains how gas availability and supply and storage can be sustainably achieved. Some potential solutions include the development of central gas gathering and processing facilities within the regions, the delta, rivers, and aquarium for treating wet gas, extracting the LPGs, uh, NGLs, and exporting the lean gas into the transmission systems. The pipeline infrastructure to tie in most of the shallow uh, water um, offshore facilities which would otherwise be stranded. The development of gas potential, uh, gas transmission systems and compressor stations to efficiently distribute gas to the areas of the country in need. And the use of containerized skid-mounted barge type plug and play technologies, virtual pipelines, as well as compressed natural gas trucks. Functional aggregators with the storage facilities where oil and gas companies can send their gas to. And in fact, the last set of points really solves the um, operator's dilemma, which is, you know, do I need to have an on-site gas compression facility? Let me end by stating that an optimistic and promising investment opportunity has been created in the Nigerian gas sector, and with the government's ever growing resolve to fix market frictions, some bordering on the much needed market and policy reforms, these investment opportunities will only get better. Thank you very much and God bless. Mm -hmm.